One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And the Jaguars over the past have drafted some people that we were really excited about and couldn't wait to see how they panned out. For example, Jalen Ramsey, Blake Bortles at the time, if you want to admit that, uh, I guarantee you a lot of Jags fans were really interested in to see what Blake Bortles can do. Leonard Fournette as well. Uh, You know, the list can go on and on for the 90s. You know, Maurice Jones drew in the second round, Allen Robinson in the second round. Just everybody, you know, even in later picks, have made us kind of happy. And we're just kind of like, all right, that's a hit. But there have been some draft picks that the Jaguars have made that have just made you shake your goddamn head, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the top five worst draft picks in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number five, Dante Fowler, 2015. I remember this draft vividly because I was over at Bryce's house and I said to him, if the Jaguars draft Dante Fowler, I am literally leaving this house. And we drafted Dante Fowler. Now, all these picks don't necessarily have to be bad selections. You know, some of these were just shockers and surprisers that at the time were not necessarily accepted by Jags fans or the Jags community, or at least myself. I don't know how you guys felt the year we drafted Dante Fowler, but me personally, I did not want Dante Fowler. You know, he went on to do pretty good. He got eight sacks uh, his last full season with us. And he was an all right, pretty pretty solid uh, rotational defensive end in our system. Uh, he fits the Rams system significantly better, and I wish him the best uh, during his time with the Rams. I ended up coming around and really liking Dante Fowler. Uh, he does make the best decisions <laughs> out of any player in the NFL, that's for sure. But this was definitely a pick that a lot of people seen coming, but a lot of people didn't want. I know he's a Florida boy, so a lot of Jacksonville fans were kind of excited, but in the big grand scheme of things, this was a very, very big surprise. So, not necessarily a bad pick, but a surprise pick. And I think that's what the title of this video is going to be, even though in the intro I said bad picks. But this is definitely, definitely a surprising one, and one that, you know, ended up being pretty alright, but at the time, I was really, really shocked and not very happy with the Jaguars. Number four, Tyson Alualu, 2009. The first ever NFL draft I ever watched. And I was listening to the analysts. I've told this story before. And they were going off about different players that the Jaguars were going to pick. And the Jags go to the... And Roger Goodell goes to the podium and says the Jaguars select Tyson Alualu. I was surprised. You know, I was young. I didn't know who he was. And the Jaguar community as well was stunned and didn't know what was going on. The Jags picked Alu-Alu. It was almost like a Taven Bryan feel. You remember when the Jags drafted Taven Bryan last year? And the Jags were just like, oh my god, why are we drafting Taven Bryan? You know, and then there was a good community of people saying, oh, it's going to be a good depth signing. He has a high ceiling or whatever but it was kind of the same feeling for Tyson and uh, Tyson ended up being one of our better uh, defensive linemen uh, during our 2009 through I think 2012 or 13 he was on the team he was probably the better the best defensive lineman we had other than Sanderic Marks you remember Sanderic Marks he was a monster but uh, Tyson Alualu definitely surprised a lot of Jags fans on draft day when his name was called uh, for our 10th overall selection uh, was it 10th? I think it was 10th, you know, and I just know that off top. So, you know, our 10th overall selection, getting Tyson Alualu, and it surprised me, and I'm sure it surprised many of you. Number three, Justin Blackman, wide receiver. Now, I know some people are going to disagree with this because they're like, it was the best pick at the time. The Jags fans were over the top at Justin Blackman coming to Jacksonville. But the thing is, we knew Justin Blackman had some problems before we drafted him and we know we're the Jacksonville Jaguars and we know that wide receivers especially never you know if they have any trouble attached to them they never ever ever stay out of trouble never they never stay out of trouble and Justin Blackman was no different you know DUIs suspensions when he was on the field he was great 
He was with Blaine Gabbert and Chad Henney, and he still had a couple of games. He had two games, I think, where he went over 200 yards receiving. So you know this kid had all the potential in the world, but he ended up busting because he could never stay on the field, not because he wasn't healthy, but because he couldn't stay out of trouble. And the thing is, the Jags knew this heading into it. And maybe it would have been a different situation if Blackman landed somewhere else, but him landing here in Jacksonville is probably the worst case scenario for this guy because Jacksonville is known for wide receivers having problems and for players in general having problems uh you know the, the fucking there was this whole thing the other day you know with Leonard Fournette getting in trouble for that unpaid ticket on a suspended license you know what I mean like oh that that's another video for another day that was frustrating to me that everybody kind of blew that one out of proportion but you know you had like Matt Jones with the cocaine you know you had uh Jimmy Smith with the cocaine you had fucking uh, you know and now Leonard Fournette and then after him you know you had I think it was Alan Ball tried paying with gum for to get some food from a convenience store while he was intoxicated you know players in Jacksonville have problems and I don't know if it's the Jacksonville area the team that they play for because it's so bad but they cannot seem to stay out of trouble and that was Justin Blackman's Achilles heel he could not stay out of trouble and that's why he was one of the most disappointing draft picks in Jaguar history Number two, Ardre Seward, wide receiver. This is another Justin Blackman case, but in his case, he only played one season and received multiple, multiple suspensions. Another first-round wide receiver that the Jaguars should not have drafted. He was drafted in the first round of the 2000 draft by the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then suspensions completely, completely ruined his career. And get this, he's been serving an infinite... Uh, indefinite, sorry, suspension from the NFL since January of 2002. And get this, he's still a member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> like It's just like Justin Blackman. They're the same thing. The RJ Seward and Justin Blackman are the same entity. They're still a, with the Jaguars, I guess. And, you know, they just suffered so many suspensions. So this is so confusing to me. Like, why, why are they still technically a jaguar you know what i mean they they don't play they're never gonna play they're in, indefinitely suspended especially rj Seward. he's drafted in 2000 it's been 19 years and you're still telling me he's a member of the jaguars still like I, that just blows my mind but he was another wide receiver we drafted and this time he was i think the third overall pick and you know every, they were high on him he was the best wide receiver in the draft and they knew they knew he had problems, but they still selected him anyway, and he still went on to get suspended and upset Job War fans because this was another wide receiver that could not stay out of trouble for the Jaguars, and it was really, really upsetting. I, again, wasn't really around for this time, but RJ Suwar definitely was one of the most disappointing draft picks in Job War history. And coming in at number one, Brian Anger, punter. In the third round. This is definitely the most disappointing pick in Jaguar history. The rumor goes, not the rumor, the story goes that Russell Wilson was on the board, but the Jags decided to take a punter, and that is the most Jacksonville Jaguar thing of all time, and I could just leave that video at that, and you guys would completely understand that this is just such a Jaguar thing to do, to draft a punter in the third round, and have him only come around for about two to three years. Like, two to three years, Brian Anger was our punter. You know, they expected this guy to be so elite, so next-level great at punting, they needed to get him in the third round. Who'd you think was going to pick this punter earlier than that? No one. No one was going to pick that Brian Anger any earlier than that, any later than that even. Like, you could have waited until the seventh round, or even probably undrafted free agency, to get this punter. But you decided, oh, before anybody snags him up, we better get him in the third round because that's the Jaguar way. Oh, my goodness. I remember this. I remember that. I went to school the next day. Didn't hear the end of it. Did not hear the end of it. Oh, you guys drafted a punter in the third round? What are you guys doing? That is ridiculous. And I just had to sit there like, yep, that's my team. <laughs> that's my favorite football team, selecting a punter in the third fucking round. Uh, even though they probably could have snagged him up in the 6th or 7th round, you know. But, again, we could have had a crack at Russell Wilson at the time. Were we even thinking Russell Wilson could be who he was? Probably not. 
but this was still probably the most disappointing pick of all time, the most head-scratching pick of all time, and definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, the worst pick in Jaguar history. And that was five times that the Jaguars disappointed us on draft night. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't no way I work with me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.